Belt's good. Make shiny, more happy. So, our impeller, microwave impeller, it uh, burned through, sitting like this, and yeah, obviously the wire is closed, but you know, I thought this air would not come back this way because it's, you know, it's all blown out this way, but I guess not. So uh, I got I got some others. Got some other microwaves that I can salvage from. And uh, I'll show you the results if we melted any aluminum or not. I don't think uh, it will be very favorable results, but we'll show you it nonetheless. Because, you know, this is a learning experience, you know? Uh, this is obvious, you know? Common sense should have dictated that this shit would melt. I, but, uh, yeah, mistakes happen. And uh, all we can do is learn from them. Yeah, don't have any melting. Oh well. It's a nice color. Looks like copper. <laughs> so yeah, this old one shot. I tried pulling the wire out and um, kind of disconnected from the other wire so we know that it <laughs> melts copper <laughs> but uh this is a new one or not a new one but another one and uh we need to make some modifications because i want to you know put it down like that but you know the bricks are down or the holes down here so it kind of needs rerouted plus the very bottom of this so whenever we put it down you know, has a hard time spinning. You can feel the friction. So we need some sort of housing that lifts it off the axle. And I'm just gonna make a an L piece of metal. And then we can use some of this aluminum that I was gonna melt down. And uh, we're gonna fit it onto this, and it's gonna come out, and then down, and then out again. If you want a little explanation on why my videos are taking so long, it's because in between videos I have a bunch of projects that I do that end up failing and they never make it into the videos. So this is another failed project here. Uh, it's not working out the way I want it to and I don't even think if I get it finished that it will work. So I'm just going to go ahead and scrap it I'm gonna save you the heartache and say that this vent worked this time we added coal to the forge, however, um, it was uh, making so much smoke and we were in a uh, very close and residential area. Neighbors come over and complained, rightfully so, uh, coal, it smells really awful whenever burned. So we had to scrap that idea and we're just going to go on to the next iteration of the forge.
I don't have a measuring cup, but I do have a marker and a free bucket. So I'm just gonna fill to exactly to this line to plaster Paris and sand. And then maybe maybe a line under with water. And then I'll pour it into this guy. Whenever you mix your plaster of Paris sand and water, I would say try to have everything ready and uh, don't be frantically, you know, reaching for the drill or the water or more water or whatever. Have it all prepared right there because, and I, and I stress this, I, it sets really fast. Once, once the water, sand, and plaster of Paris mix even a little bit, it immediately starts to set. Like, you need, you're against the clock. You need to get this stuff in the mold as fast as you can. That's my warning for this. Like I said, I think I need the oxygen. Yeah, you need some oxygen. Rookie mistake, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I, uh, I turned on the propane tank and uh, the propane flooded into the chamber and whenever I lit it, everything caught on fire. So yeah, uh, learn from my mistakes. Uh, luckily, nothing bad happened besides some singed hairs. Light the torch first and put it somewhere while you, you know, do your other setup or whatever. I built this forge a total of eight different times each time trying to do something different trying to orient the bricks differently trying to use different material in the beginning I used a bunch of bushcraft material I tried to use clay to keep the heat in along with the bricks uh, this ultimately ended up failing I tried to make my own cement um, and uh, that also failed I ultimately came to the conclusion that I'm not going to be able to make a bushcraft forge like I wanted to. Um, part of my inspiration came from Primitive Technologies. Uh, he made some uh, bushcraft mortar out of uh, campfire ash, which I used, but uh, to no avail. And then there was a, uh, another video about making um, uh, bricks basically out of uh, seashells. That, that, was a, that was a fun video to look at. He went into all the chemistry. But um, I don't think I, I could get the seashells hot enough. or I don't know what the problem was. But uh, I could never get the, uh, the clamshells to slack basically to turn into lime. So in the end, I went with Plaster of Paris, like all the other YouTubers. I went with Plaster of Paris. I uh, reinforced it with chicken wire. I, uh, I used the bucket as the center and the bricks as the uh, exterior. And then I just filled Plaster of Paris in between that. Now, uh, some YouTubers will suggest that you use a refractory material in with it so that it doesn't crack and it's less prone to uh, breaking down and more prone to keeping in the heat but uh, but ultimately I just threw that by the wayside and I uh, bit the bullet and I bought myself some ceramic wool this stuff is fantastic I love it I would say uh, do away with the refractory material altogether and uh, just make sure you have some ceramic wool. Both my burner and just using propane was not enough. I made this thing that mixes uh, compressed air, which you know is basically how much oxygen is in the air with propane 
and this enables me to get a high temperature inside the forge. How that is achieved is I have a propane tank and on it is a 30 psi regulator. The other line will go into a air compressor and they'll you know mix together. You can dial the propane very efficiently with this gate valve so uh, I highly recommend it and if I were to change one thing about this is that I would replace this check valve with uh, the same gate valve that I have on the propane side. Uh, you can't have very fine movement with a uh, check valve, ball check valve, I think that's what it's called. I also put uh, the thicker thread tape, the yellow type, on all of the sides that has that's dealing with a lot more heat or could possibly be dealing with heat as well as uh, keeping those gases in and on the air side I just kept your regular thread locker. That is probably all that I have for you today. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Got it. All right. Okay. All right. Now going to get this fucking slag out just by flicking it off. We're going to have probably put it back. I want to put it back in the uh I want to put it back in the forge. I'm not chancing it. A lot better. A lot better. One more, one more. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, go, go, go. Use the bigger guy. Ready? Yep. Here it goes. I guess let's reheat that, or put that back in the forge. I was thinking about putting it on that brick and scraping that off. No, it's not going to scrape off. We can remelt it. That's what we usually have to do. Dude, look at that fucking block of aluminum, my guy. I didn't think it'd fill that whole thing up. Oh, look at it, bro. Hold on. Need a bucket of water. <laughs> that is a solid brick of aluminum. Oh my gosh. I mean, it doesn't look the prettiest. But, you know. <laughs> oh, that took fucking four months to make. Four fucking months. I like uh, the method that some people use, which is just putting it in like those little uh, cupcake pucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's much smaller and manageable. Here, push it with the hammer. It feels fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I got to start putting shit away, I guess. Well, you have fun. Take this. <laughs>